Hey everyone, welcome to the April edition of the Oracle Visual Builder Office Hours. Um, that's our monthly meeting for the community of people who are developing applications with Visual Builder. My name is Shai Schmelzer, part of the product management team here at Oracle. And um, with me today are also Brian Fry and Mortaza Amiji. Uh, they are both monitoring the Q&A panel where you can ask questions during this session um, and they'll be happy to answer uh, those. Uh, we like to keep those sessions interactive. So anything that comes up um, that you need clarification about, hopefully regarding the topic that we cover today, but also if just gener generic um, Visual Builder questions and Visual Builder Studio questions, feel free to post them on the Q&A chat. Today's topic is going to be a, an introduction to Visual Builder Studio, um, explaining what it actually does, um, how it can help you as a team that builds application with Visual Builder to be more effective, how it can help you manage your development lifecycle, automate your deployment steps, and um, overall why we actually created this product. But before we dive into those, I wanted to cover a couple of new items uh, that are new this month, uh, just in case you're not tracking us on our LinkedIn group or uh, on Twitter or on our community page. A few things that are new this month. Uh, first of all, there's a new book that teaches Oracle Visual Builder. Um, maybe some of you already know Oracle Visual Builder, but probably a lot of you have new team members and uh, new people that might need uh, to get started quickly uh, to get to know the product. And even if you already know the product, maybe you need something that covers some of the aspects that you still are not sure about. So uh, Uncle Jane, who's one of the very active members of the Oracle community, has written a book about Visual Builder. Uh, this book is covering the latest version. All the screenshots are from the current production version. Um, it's called Effortless App Development with Oracle Visual Builder. It's uh, been published by Packet Publishing. Um, there's an actual book and there's an ebook. Uh, you can get both of those from the link on this slide. And by the way, if you're a member of our LinkedIn uh, group, um, if you're on LinkedIn, just uh, search in the search bar the Oracle Visual Builder. Uh, Anko actually posted there a couple of discount codes, so you can actually get this book in a special price during this month. So if you're looking for a book to learn Visual Builder, it's a great book to uh, start with. Um, beyond that, we of course have our documentation, uh, our blogs keep getting updated. Um, there are three new blogs uh, that we published in the last month. Uh, they are covering all sorts of topics. One of them is covering how to monitor visual builder applications with the new Oracle application performance monitoring. So this is a tool uh, that has actually a free edition that you can use to monitor a visual builder application as it runs. Uh, look at the uh, experience your users have, see their performance time, see the activity they're doing, see any errors that are happening and help you tune the performance of your application. Uh, so there's a blog uh, that you can go over on blogs.orkel.com slash VBCS uh, to see how to use this tool, gives you a, a nice overview of the experience and the insight you can get. Second blog is the thing that you're seeing on the right side if you need to implement a collapsible hierarchical list view in Visual Builder, something like what you see over here on the right, shows you step by step how to do that. And the last blog is kind of related to what we're going to cover today, and it covers how to automate code audit for your application as part of your merge request process. So as you go through um, doing changes in your code and merging them into Git branches, uh, you might want to run some auditing on your code either as part of this merge request or maybe before you do a deployment to make sure that your application actually doesn't have any issues. So this blog would show you how to do that. So again, if you're not already tracking it, you should track the blogs.orkel.com slash VBCS um, to get the latest updates and technical help. And then the third item I wanted to cover is the upcoming conference from Oditag. Oditag is a longstanding Oracle user group. It's actually uh, the 
Acronym stands for Oracle Development Tools User Group. Um, it's been around for years now, and they have a yearly conference called K-Scope. Um, due to COVID, uh, it's going to be online again this year, like last year. And they have a special track there called the Modern App Development Track that is focused on visual builder and digital assistant. So the great thing about this conference being online is that you can join from anywhere in the world. It's going to run at the end of June. Uh, there are a lot of sessions there about Visual Builder, Digital Assistant, Visual Builder Studio, and also a lot of other texts that might be interesting uh, for database developer, for um, Apex developer, for business intelligence and other topics. So check out this um, conference and specifically this a track, the modern application development track. You can see the list of presentations over here, the, the list of hands-on lab, and um, make your decision if this is something that would be interesting to you or someone from your team. I know that not a lot of us get to travel this uh, year, but uh, still attending some conferences is a great way to meet other developers and learn some new stuff. And that's it in terms of news. Uh, now let's get to the main topic of today, which is to talk about Visual Builder Studio. So Visual Builder Studio, in a nutshell, it's a complete team development and continuous integration and continuous delivery automation platform with specific features for Visual Builder developers, which is what we're going to cover today. You can use Visual Builder Studio to do team development and continuous integration and deployment for any type of application development. But if you're doing Visual Builder development, there are some specific unique features there that are very helpful for us. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Visual Builder Studio, uh, it's a service that Oracle released with this name about half a year ago, and it's actually a merging of capabilities from two services we have. One of them was called Developer Cloud, and the other one is Visual Builder that you're all using. What we did is we took the capabilities that are in Visual Builder, injected them into Developer Cloud, renamed the whole thing Visual Builder Studio, and created a single tool where you can do both your development as well as the whole team management and uh, automation of the delivery of the software. And we added a bunch of new stuff as well when we did this product rename. So let me explain where does it fit into the picture? So some of you might be using Visual Builder this way. You basically have a development team, you have a Visual Builder instance, you go into Visual Builder, you open up the editor, you do the visual development, you're creating your business object, and loading the data, accessing data from REST services, and then using the same instance to host your application, and then your users accessing this environment. And then in terms of managing development, uh, you add team members into your application, okay, in the application setting, and uh, you go through the publishing cycle of staging the application and then uh, publishing the application to make it live and then creating a new version and working on the new version. So this was the basic capabilities that we built into Visual Builder and a lot of you are using it that way. In parallel, we had this service called Developer Cloud, and some of you started to use Developer Cloud with Visual Builder. And what Developer Cloud gave you is the ability to store your code in a Git repository. Git is a version management solution, the most popular out there in the market. And in Developer Cloud, you had those Git repositories. You could have loaded your application code directly from Visual Builder. You had a connection there to Developer Cloud loaded the code into there, and then you were able to do some Git operations, uh, like uh, work on branches, um, and then merging the code directly inside Developer Cloud. Another thing that some of you have been doing is managing deployment, especially if you were deploying onto multiple instances of Visual Builder, using the grant commands that are available um, in Visual Builder. Uh, those are a set of commands that can take your code package it, optimize it, and publish it. And you were able to automate it with Developer Cloud and the CI CD functionality it provides. Now, what we did with Visual Builder Studio is we actually moved the visual development aspect into Visual Builder Studio, okay? So now you have one development environment 
which integrates your visual development along with your Git and very deep Git integration, along with your deployment pipelines, with code review, and with the ability to manage tasks, agile process, and share information over wikis. And with this single development environment, you can then deploy to multiple runtimes. Uh, the runtime is basically your regular visual builder instance that you have today. And this is where you host your application, host your business object, the data, and the secure uh, REST proxy that enables you to access other REST services in a secure way. This way, the development team is actually working on the Visual Builder Studio, and the users are actually accessing the application from Visual Builder. And that's basically the overall architecture of Visual Builder Studio. So what do you get from Visual Builder Studio as a developer who's working on Visual Builder? So the first thing that you get is the ability to version manage your VB app using Git. And because you're using Git, it's much easier to have multiple developers working on the same application at the same time without constantly overwriting each other's changes with the ability to manage those changes and work through them. The other thing that you get is you get the same development experience, the visual development experience that you're used to integrated into the same environment. So you still get the visual editor with all the nice features you have there and the code editor, but this visual editor also have be has better integration with Git and some additional Git menu options and Git panels that we'll cover later on. The other thing that you're getting is the ability to automate the processing of packaging your application, optimizing it and deploying it. Okay, and if you were here last month for our session about tuning Visual Builder application, you saw, for example, that optimizing your application can drastically reduce the number of REST calls that you're doing to the backend to get resources and basically lose your application faster. And then automating deployment means that you can take the single application and you can deploy it to a dev instance and then to a QA instance and then to a production instance without having to go export the application, import the application into each location. And you can actually have this done automatically for you whenever you need it. The other thing that you get in Visual Builder Studio is the ability to manage the environment. So you can actually see which version of the application is deployed to each instance of your Visual Builder, and you can actually manage those deployed application directly from the environment section in Visual Builder Studio. You can also manage your development team members. So you can add multiple members to work on the same project to share information, you can also have restrictions on who can do what over there. And you can also track issues um, and manage a whole agile sprint development process. We have a full issue tracking system, agile planning system, uh, something that is similar to um, things like, um, let's say Jira or Bugzilla in terms of functionality. If currently you're managing your to-do list on an Excel spreadsheet, this is probably a much better way to do this team management and tracking who's supposed to do what, what's the priority, things like that. And there's even a wiki there where you can share a lot of information, whether it's a design document, best practices, tips, summary of meetings, whatever is helpful for your team to work together. So all of those things are things you get in Visual Builder Studio, and we're gonna see this today in a demo, but first we'll cover it in a few slides. Um, just a quick reminder, if you have any questions during the session, please use the Q&A tab rather than the chat tab. This allows our uh, monitors to better answer any questions that might appear there. All right, so let's cover some of those features in more details. So first of all, when you create a Visual Builder a studio project, you now have the ability to associate it with environments. Environments are basically VB instances. This can be the standalone VB or uh, Oracle Integration Cloud that you point Visual Builder Studio to. And then we can use Visual Builder to manage and work with those environments. Okay. Uh, you can map development environments. You can map also your QA, production environments, your deployment uh, destination. In order to use the visual editing capabilities of Visual Builder Studio, you have to have 
a VB instance somewhere or an OIC instance, okay? And you must point one to Visual Builder Studio, and then we can actually use the visual editor. From this environment, you can also start and stop those instances. You can manage trust certificate on those instances. Um, for example, if you're uh, signing a, a private SSL certification and you want to load them, you can do it directly from here. And you can also view all the deployments that are on those instances. And when you're viewing those deployments, which is what you're seeing in this screenshot, you can also manage them. Um, you can take an application, for example, lock it and then load data into this application, into the business object, uh, and then unlock it, for example. Uh, you can export data from an existing application into a zip file, and you can also undeploy applications. So you have a full view of which application. You can also see which version of the application is on this environment uh, that you're managing from Visual Builder Studio. Probably the main reason for a lot of you guys to use Visual Builder Studio uh, as part of your development cycle is the Git integration, okay? So again, inside uh, Visual Builder, we allow you to spin up Git repositories. Those are actually part of Visual Builder Studio that is completely free for you guys. The minute that you have a Visual Builder instance, you're entitled to spin up Visual Builder Studio and the Git is totally free there. So it allows you to store your code in there and share it with multiple developers. Okay, so team members are actually sharing this Git repository. You can then create branches and manage your work on the code using branches and use the whole Git flow uh, concepts of how you manage development uh, without basically with minimizing things like overwrite and conflicts while you're developing. One important thing uh, to note about when you're using the Git version versus doing it in native Visual Builder is the way that you promote versions of the application. In regular Visual Builder, you would go in and you would say new version. In Visual Builder Studio, your version is actually part of your code. So there's a part in your code where the version of the application is defined and you can increase the version just by changing the code. And you actually need to do this before you go and deploy a new version in production. Now the Git repository is where the code is shared among multiple developers. If you're familiar with how you work with Git, then what you usually do is you take the code from the shared repository and create your own personal copy on your own machine, okay? And the equivalent of doing this in Visual Builder Studio is done through Workspace. So Workspace is basically your private copy or clone of the code that is dedicated for you as a developer. So only you can see what is going on there. Only you can make changes in this workspace. And this is where you have your private area to work on whatever feature you're implementing next. And this workspace can be associated with a specific branch in your Git repository. So it doesn't have to be from the main branch. It can be from any sub branch that you created there. And in fact, you can manage this whole branching directly from inside the workspace. You modify your code in this workspace, and when you're ready to share it with the rest of the developer, you simply do a Git push, which would take the changes from your private copy and push it into the shared copy. So if you're working on a shared branch, it would go into the shared branch, and then other developers would be able to see those changes. Okay. Now, because the workspaces are private to a specific developers, we also introduced an, op an option to change the ownership of the branch, which is again, what you're seeing over here on the right side in the menu, which allows you to take the code changes that you did and without merging them into the shared branch, you can actually transfer it to another developer if they need to do other changes on that thing before you merge it uh, into uh, the shared repository. And again, on your workspace, you can do operations like export of the application. You can, of course, click to open the uh, workspace, which would basically open up the visual editor. Now, the basic coding cycle that most of us would recommend following when you're working with a Git repository and visual builder is something like that. You have your main or master branch. This is your base code for the application. 
This is uh, the main line of code. And then when you have a feature that you need to implement, you branch this code. So you create a copy of it. This is still a shared branch. So this is something that all the developers in the project have access to. Then from this branch, you would create a copy of your code, a workspace. So this is your private copy. You'll do some code changes on there. Okay, then you have the changed code. Then you push it back into the shared branch. Uh, this is the step where other people can look at the code. So you do a, what we call a merge request. Uh, you can do it by clicking publish in Visual Builder or we'll show you some other ways as well. People will review your code, make sure it's okay. And then you merge it into the main line of code. Okay, so this is the basic flow. Now, some people would actually add one more level um, where there's the main code and there's a developer branch where all the development is done on the development branch. And then you merge the development into master later on. It's just a matter of how many levels you want to do here. But this is the basic flow that most developers would probably follow. So one of the things that we do here in Visual Builder Studio is make sure that you have even better experience working with Git. So you have the Git menu inside Visual Builder Studio and you would see there uh, more commands than you would see in the regular Git menu in Visual Builder. You would see things like the ability to rename branch, uh, to do diffs, uh, to do merge, um, as well as all the regular uh, branching and pulling and pushing of code and committing code uh, that you see in regular Visual Builder. But again, the menu here is much more comprehensive and it's going to grow with each new version of Visual Builder Studio. Our next version would add additional options over there. The other thing that is very important is that inside Visual Builder, the visual editor, you have this area over here, which is the Git panel. So just like you have the web app and the services and the business object, you now have a Git area where you can actually see the status of your files. So you can see, for example, all the files that were changed and would need to be committed. You can see files that have been added to your application and have yet to be added to your uh, application source. Okay, So you have a better view here. You can also see conflicts that might happen. In, uh, in cases where another developer changed the code that you're working on. When you're committing the code into the Git repository, one thing that Visual Builder Studio lets you do is commit some of the files and not all of the files. So in regular Visual Builder, when you do a commit of code into the Git repository, you commit everything that you worked on. Over here, you can choose which files to commit. So for example, if there's a new image that you added and you're not sure that it needs to be part of it, you can say, okay, I don't want to commit this one. I want to commit the two changes in my HTML and JSON file. And another very cool thing that you get in Visual Builder Studio is the ability to resolve conflicts. So we all know that when multiple developers are working on the same page, on the same application, there might be situations where they do changes that might conflict with each other. So you do a change while another developer changes something else in the application, and then you need to resolve those conflicts. So inside the Visual Builder Studio, you actually get this visual experience of seeing what are the changes that you did, the changes that the other developer did, and then you can actually merge uh, those changes and decide which change to pick up and resolve those conflicts. And then the other thing that you can do from inside Visual Builder Studio is actually create merge requests. So those are situations where you can, you are done working on your code in your branch, you're ready to merge those changes from your branch into the main branch and you want to create this merge request you can actually do this directly from inside visual builder studio by using the publish button that is up there on the right side so those are just the basic things about working with the git aspects i'm going to skip the demo for now i'm going to do it um, after the next section of slides uh, simply to keep our timing correct all right, so the other thing that is different in Visual Builder Studio is the way that you manage the whole application lifecycle, okay? In regular Visual Builder, you have this develop instance, and then you have the stage step, and then you have the publish or live 
version of the application. In Visual Builder Studio, you have one most uh, option in the middle. Um, in Visual Builder Studio, you basically have four steps of the life cycle. The first thing you can do is you can do a preview. Preview is basically just like clicking the run button in Visual Builder. You click the run button in Visual Builder Studio. You get a copy of your application uh, that you can interact with. It's a live application with your data for the business object coming from your development instance. Um, you invoke this directly from the designer. It runs on the designer as well. And it's very similar to the VB preview button that you have there. And you can have one version of it. It's basically whatever you're looking into right now. You click run. This is what you're seeing running. The next thing you can do in Visual Builder Studio is something called share. You can share your application. So again, you do it from the designer. Uh, this is actually taking your application and deploying it though into the development environment that you're associated with, the runtime. Okay. It copies, it could copy the data from your business object over there. And then this is very similar to what you would do as stage in regular Visual Builder. Again, there's one version of it. You get the URL, you can give the URL to other people in your team and they can play with this runtime version of your application and see how it behaves, kind of test it. Then there are two deploy options that you can do in Visual Builder Studio. The first one is deploy with version, which again is similar to how you would do staging of an application. But nice thing here is that you can actually have multiple applications that are deployed in this way. Okay, They are deployed to the runtime. They can have, again, you can have multiple versions uh, of your stage application. Um, and they have their own business object. Uh, you can load data into them. And this is used for uh, a lot of the QA work that people would do. And then there's the deploy of your live application, um, what we call deploy without a version, because there isn't a version in the URL. Therefore, the URL for this deployment is fixed. It's always the same. And again, this is deployed to a runtime target that you're pointing to. And you do this. Um, you have only one version of it, and it's very similar to the publish operation that you were doing in Visual Builder, in the regular Visual Builder. So those are the four life cycles that you can go through in Visual Builder Studio. Now, the way that you do all of those, not all of those, but the way that you do the deployment steps in Visual Builder is by using build automation. So we have build jobs that actually take your code from the Git repository, package it and then deploy it. And you do this with declarative interface that allow you to define those build jobs uh, with a set of properties uh, of how you want to package your application into what name and how you want to deploy your application in, in what format. Okay. It's basically a simpler way to interact with the grant command that we mentioned previously, which is what some of you are doing today. Some of you are basically running shell scripts that are running grant commands to package the application and then publish it. Now you can actually do this in a much more declarative way and directly hook it up to various environments. And then you can take those build jobs and organize them into pipelines. So have build jobs that run in a specific order following each other. Okay. Um, we actually create such a pipeline automatically for you whenever you create a new application in Visual Builder Studio. And our pipeline that we create by default has two jobs, one to package the application, the other one to deploy it. And uh, they are hooked up together. So every time that you package the application, we can then execute the deploy step for you. Okay. And the one thing to remember is that you do need to update the deployment job that we create to let us know which user and which environment you want to deploy to. Okay. And we also make sure that this pipeline that we create is automatically invoked whenever you change the code in the main or the master branch. Um, this allows us to basically automate this process of, hey, whenever I did a change that is now part of my code, I can automatically deploy it into my environment. One other unique thing to remember about Visual Builder Studio that is a little different from Visual Builder, it's the life cycle of your business objects. If you're using business objects inside your Visual Builder application, the life cycle for those is managed as a, basically a separate step in your build process where you can uh, have, again, those separate 
databases that hold your business object, and you can load data into them uh, using, again, declarative steps in your build job. So this allows you to take, for example, and load data into a business object, um, also into any deployment that you did of your application on any instance, we can manage the loading of data into that as a separate step. And again, you can incorporate this into your build pipeline. In fact, into your build pipeline, you can incorporate a lot of other tasks. You can, for example, do code auditing. You can do dependency vulnerability analyzing. You can run SonarCube uh, reviews of your code if you want to. Uh, you can automate testings of uh, your UI. So you can create scripts that test your UI and automate running those as part of your uh, pipeline. Um, if your backend, for example, is developed outside of VB, maybe you have some REST services, maybe you have some database with words on top of those, you can also automate those parts as part of your build pipeline. We have utilities to do deployments uh, of, let's say, REST services, Node.js, Docker images, uh, manage databases, create objects in databases, and a lot of other things that you can do as part of the overall continuous integration and deployment support that we have in Visual Builder. All right, so uh, I think this is enough for slides for now. It's a lot of slides. Um, I'm gonna show you how you actually use this uh, whole thing in today's demo. So I'm gonna actually be two people today in the demo. I'm gonna be shy at one point, but I'm gonna start by being Jeff. Jeff is this guy over here with the bird and he's basically um, one of our developers and you can see we're working now in Visual Builder Studio. By the way, when you go into Visual Builder Studio at the beginning, you're going to have a list of projects. Initially, you're not going to have any project, but once you start getting project, um, team members can be part of multiple projects. A project uh, in the Visual Builder sense would usually map to a specific Visual Builder application, although you can manage a single project that has multiple uh, applications. But the normal situation would have you um, map a project to a specific application. And then for this application, you're going to have team members, okay? And from your organization, you'll be able to add new team members into your environment. Team members can have different roles. Okay, so you can have, for example, multiple project owners. Project owners can do other things, like, for example, add additional developers. Uh, you can have some people that are full developers. They can do almost anything uh, except manage the overall project. Uh, there are limited developers. Uh, we have contributors. So, for example, if you just need people that can update wikis and report issues, but not actually touch your code, maybe some of your QA people, they can also be part of your team and you can have restrictions on what they do. Okay. The other thing that you're seeing here on the homepage is you see what we call our activity stream, which is all the things that happened in our project over the last day. So what happened today, what happened yesterday, and as you scroll down, you basically go more and more into the history of what happened in previous weeks, etc. So today we can see, for example, that one of the things we did is we deployed, we ran a build job that is called demo app deploy, that deployed our demo application and then we loaded data into that application. Now this build job is associated with an environment. So if we click here on environments, uh, if you remember back to the slides, this is where we started. We have a bunch of environments that we manage from here. Each environment can have a Visual Builder instance. So this is one Visual Builder instance that I have. This is my development instance. And then over here in the QA, I have another instance. This is, let's say, my QA instance, or maybe the production instance. I can see the status of each of those instances. I can um, do operations on some of those instances. So for example, on the development one, I can start and stop it, okay, because this is in my tenancy and I have the rights to do it. I can load certificates, and I can also see all the deployments that are currently deployed on this Visual Builder instance from inside Visual Builder Studio. So what you can see here is that on this instance, I actually have three versions of my application right now. Um, the build job that we saw before ran 46 minutes ago and deployed a copy of my application, version 1.1, onto this instance. And actually from here, I can expand and 
click to directly go into the application that I deployed. Okay, so this is, uh, some of you might have seen this before. Uh, this is our COVID tracker application where we can basically put in uh, the details of a country again and get live data on what's going on in that country at that point of time. This is something that is again built uh, with Visual Builder. You can see the Redwood look and feel. And um, we have this part. We also have here a list of doctors, for example, over here. Okay. Um, so this is Jeff. He's looking at what happened. He saw that we deployed an application. He's looking at the application. He's running the application. And again, this application right now, if you look at the URL, there's a version in here. This is basically a staged version of our application, okay, uh, with a specific version that we're running. And then maybe he's looking into this and says, okay, uh, there's an issue here. The title is not the right title that we need to have on this page, okay? So one thing that he can do is he can actually document issues that he's finding in the application by going over to the issues area in Visual Builder Studio. In the issues area, we're tracking all the issues. We can see all the recently changed, all the open issues. We can actually do advanced searches, do uh, advanced queries, on our repositories of issue, and we can also create a new issue. So let's create issue, a title on the a doctor's page is wrong, okay? A should say our doctors, okay? See wiki for UI spec, okay? Because one of the things we have here is we have a wiki and we can share, for example, all our design documents over there. Then we can indicate whether this is a defect or a task or a feature that we want to build. This specifically is a defect. Also, by the way, if you're working with Azure methodology, you can work with epics and stories and basically break down your application that way. You can indicate severity, you can indicate priority. This is a high priority for us. You can have various areas in your project. This list and other lists here are customizable. So you can basically say, this is a UI issue. And then you can also have a default owner for each area. And this can be anyone from your team. We'll assign this one to Shai and we'll tell him, look, this is actually due today. We can also estimate how long it's gonna take him to resolve it. Estimate either in time or in agile complexity points, which is what we're gonna do here. And we're going to create a new issue. This is issue 63 in our system, and it's now documented and we're tracking it, okay? We can track it, by the way, by looking at our boards. So boards are a concept from the agile world uh, where we can see, for example, all our backlog, backlog of issues. Okay, right now we have two open issues in our system and we can also manage a development sprint from here. So let's create a new development sprint. This is the second sprint that we're running in April. We're going to try and resolve uh, 10 points of complexities, for example. And then we can say, okay, what are we going to handle in this development sprint? We're going to um, handle the image issue that we have here and also this title, this defect 63 that we just created. And then we can start the sprint. And basically you have here a bunch of tools to help you manage your development process, okay? So right now, for example, I can go into my active sprint. I can see who is supposed to be doing what, what the status is of each one of the tasks. I can, by the way, change um, the reports over here. You can see it in columns, in swing lanes, um, and I can update it. For example, if Jeff knows that he's already working on this, he can move it over to in progress if he's working on the image issue that we have done. Okay. So this is one of the things that some of you might find useful in terms of managing what your team is doing and tracking how the team is working. And this is issue tracking and agile planning. But the main thing that we are here for is actually managing our code. And our code is inside our Git repository over here. Okay. And you can see from here, your actual application code. If you drill down, for example, into your web app and into your flows and into the others flow, for example, pages, you can actually see the HTML code that is constructing your page directly over here, okay? Uh, where we have a list with those fields. And you can actually even edit the code directly here. But the nicer thing to do would be instead of doing it on a code level to actually do it visually. This is why we have Visual Builder. So inside Visual Builder Studio, we have this workspace area, okay? And as I mentioned before, the workspace is basically your personal copy of the application, 
Okay. Oh, so now I'm going to actually switch over to look at it from Shai's perspective. Okay. And Shai is the developer. He just got assigned defect 44. He can look into what is defect 44. Um, okay. Uh, defect 44. Oh, sorry. No, that's not what he got assigned. That's just the status change. He got assigned defect 63. So he needs to fix the title on the doctor's page. Um, and he's going to do it on the code. So in the workspace area, Shai has his own workspace. This is my own local copy of the code. Right now it's connected to the Git repository. It's working on a specific branch that we have over there. And I'm gonna work on fixing issue 63. So when I click on here, I can actually open uh, the visual editor. By the way, uh, from the menu on the right, I can also open this visual editor in a separate tab if I want to keep um, still track of the project context here and the workspace over on the side. And then when the workspace is actually opening, it's opening in the same visual editor that you're familiar with, okay? But it's getting the code directly from the Git repository, okay? So now when I look at the others page, for example, and the doctor's page, um, it's coming from this Git repository. Now, as I mentioned, there's a specific flow that is recommended as the way to work when working on um, an application. And this work is to actually work in branches. So I can actually do it from here, from the Git menu. I can switch to create a, a branch. So I'm gonna create a new branch. I'm gonna call it branch uh, 63, okay? And I'm gonna base it on the code from our master application. So this is the remote code, the remote branch called master. I'm gonna create my own branch in my workspace to work on this code, okay? And I'm switching over to that context. So this is now creating the branch and getting the code over for master. Now, one of the things that is uh, something that usually is recommended is before any work that you're doing on the code, or uh, in a frequent um, cycle, you should also do a pull of the code from the master. So over here, you can actually go over and pull any changes that people did in the remote master um, over to our copy. Now, because we just created this branch, there are no changes, so we're good to go. And then we can just do our regular developer. So for example, we can go over here and switch it to um, the right title, which I think was Our Doctors, okay? Something like that. Hey, maybe it will be nice. Maybe we can also change the size of the image here. Okay, so um, if we go to the structure, we can go to the avatar, and instead of being extra large, we'll just set it to large. That might make it our UI look a little better. All right, so those are the changes I did in my code. And again, this is my own personal copy. I can click here to run this. So this is the previous step. This is me just checking the application, making sure that the changes I just did look okay at runtime. I go to the others tab. I look, I see our doctors. I can see the uh, data and I can see the image is much more scalable, scalable for our UI. So I'm fine with that. Now, if I want, I can also go over here and I can do the share operation. Now share would actually create this URL over here um, where other people in my team would be able to access the application. By the way, I can, again, copy the data for my development or create a clean database for them to test it with. So again, this is very similar to how you were doing stage in Visual Builder. This is an operation called Shell. What it actually does is it takes the application and deploys it to our VB uh, instance, to the environment that we are working on right now. So this is why it's going to take a little bit to actually uh, do this step. You'll be able to track this if you actually look at the environments um, in Visual Builder Studio. So if we go over to Visual Builder Studio and we look at the environments, uh, right now we are working on the development environments. And if we are looking uh, into the deployments that are being done there, you can see that just now a new shared version of the application was created. And then other people in my team can actually go and invoke this and look at the application that was shared and look at um, how it looks. And again, maybe this is our QA team. 
they can go over and uh, we actually created it with an empty database. So we don't have any images, but we do have our correct title here. So we know it's good. Okay. So this was the share operation. And then you actually also can do it from here. You can do open shared application and test it from here. Once everyone is happy with the changes they did, I can now push them into the repository. Now, one of the nice things that you can see here, you can see the little icon on the file to indicate this file actually has changed. Okay, the other stuff, because that's the page we worked on. You can also see the Git panel here. And if you go to the Git panel, you can see uh, the file also has a modified file over here. I'm going to do one more thing to show you uh, a nice thing, which is if I take, for example, and I add a button to my page over here, okay, uh, you can see that in my Git view, I can see that not only my HTML file, my JSON file also changed. And the reason is because I just added a new component and the JSON file tracks which components are being used in my application. Okay, So over here in the Git tab, you can see all the changes that were done. And then you can commit those from here or directly from here. So we can do a commit. This would keep a copy of those changes in my own personal instance. And again, I can choose which files to commit. I don't have to commit all of them. I can commit just some of them. And um, so this is fixed for issue 63, right? Commit. All right. So this is in my local copy. If Jeff now goes, by the way, uh, we can go as Jeff back to our Git repository. Okay. Uh, you can see that right now there is no branch 63 here. You can also only see the master and the shy work branch. And this is because so far I've been working on my own copy in my workspace. Now I'm ready to share it with the rest of the team. I can go over and I can push my changes into the remote Git repository. You can see that it's going to create this branch 63 over there and put my changes in this branch. So now if we switch back into Jeff's view over here, um, yeah, he'll probably need to do a reload for the page because we fetched this list once. And now we can go and see branch 63. And if we would go over to the fix transaction, he can actually see what we changed in our application. So every change that we did. Here. So this is a way for the team again to collaborate and know what's going on. At this point of time, um, I'm ready from here to actually go and publish my changes into the master or into the main branch over here. So I can click the publish button and I'm going to do publish after the merge request. So I'm going to request people to review my code. So I'm gonna say this is a fix for issue 63, okay? And I want Jeff to review my code. I'm gonna add myself as another reviewer. And I can also say this is related to defect 63. And you can see we actually go to our issue tracking system and you can pick up things from there, okay? If I know that it's also related to uh, issue 43, no, no, it's not 43, it's, I think it's 41, no, 40, yeah, 44. I also fixed issue 44 here. Okay, so I'm gonna add both of them over to my um, merge request. Okay, so now I created the merge request and now Jeff can actually go over, he would actually get an email and he would have his merge request in his queue. So we can go over to our merge request Okay, now I'm again working as Jeff. Jeff can actually click on the merge request that I created. He can see all the comments that I wrote for him. Okay, this is fixed for issue 63. He can actually click to see what is issue 63 to if he doesn't remember what he filed, go back to the merge request, look at the actual changed files. He can actually give me a, a comments. For example, uh, is this the right title? for the button, okay? So he reviews my code. He can say, okay, whether it's good or not. Me as Shai, again, over here, I'm Shai. I can go to the same merge request and we're actually now collaborating on the code. We're doing peer programming. I can see the comments that Jeff gave me, like, is this the right line on this line? Okay, I can say yes, for example, or things like that. And then each one of us can actually approve the changes. Okay, so this is Jeff approving it. 
this is me approving it. And now that I see that, um, let's do a refresh here, just to make sure that everyone has reviewed the code. Yeah, the two reviews are okay. Nobody is still in waiting time, so I'm ready to merge the code. I'm gonna click merge, take this and merge from my branch into master. Okay, I can resolve those two issues, okay, um, and indicate that they are resolved. Maybe I don't want to resolve this issue yet. And I can also delete this branch if I want to. So let's create a merge commit. This takes my code, put it into the main line of code over here. Okay. Now, what is happening now is I'm gonna switch over to the build area, and you're going to see that we have now a build in the queue. We have a build called demo package. Okay, so it's gonna take our application and package it. And this is, I'm actually gonna go into this build job, show you the configuration uh, as it's running right now. This is hooked up to our Git repository and automatically invoked when someone is modifying our master branch. Okay, and that's the indication here. And then what it's going to do is it's going to take and use one of the steps that we have here for Visual Builder, which is the package step. It's gonna optimize my application, package it and use the default names, and then store the zip files that are being created from this packaging in the last step of the build, okay? So this is actually running right now. It's basically taking my application, compressing the files, optimizing the deployment and creating zip files, and then storing them over here in the artifact. Now, this is part of the pipeline that we created here. So you can actually see in the pipeline, um, the pipelines that are running, okay? Right now we're running this pipeline. After the demo, we're going to do the deploy step. The deploy, if we look at the configuration of the deploy step, it's actually going to take the zip files that we created in the last build, and then use, again, one of the steps here for visual application, uh, actually the Oracle deployment step, to actually take it and deploy it to an environment. When we're deploying, we can indicate whether we want to keep the data in that environment, in the business object. We can indicate whether we want to have a version number in the URL, which is basically the equivalent of staging the application. Okay, and we can also indicate if there are other uh, file name, and we can also indicate the profile that we're using. For example, if we want to switch in the application profile which REST backends we're accessing, you can all you can control of, all of this from here. And you can see we are now running the deploy, and this is again because we are now part of this pipeline that is executing right now. We can see first one ran successfully just now, and now we're running the deploy step, and when the deploy is finished, your application is going to be out there with uh, the changes ready for people to look at, at that. I want to show you a couple of other things that you can do. Um, one of the things that you can do is a uh, conflict. Of, okay, so we see the deployment over here finished successfully. We can look at the log file, for example, or we can just go into the environments and uh, under the deployment tab, we would see that just now we deployed version 1.1. And if we go over to that version right now, we would see our changed application. Okay, so if we go to the others tab, okay, we see the right title and the new button over here. And again, right now we don't have any data because we're managing the business object lifecycle separately. I can show you that I have another build job over here that actually loads the data. So again, I'm gonna run this one, okay? And this one is going to take and load data. If we look at the configuration for the load data job, it's again using a couple of built-in steps that we have for importing data into our instance, okay, version 1.1 from this zip file. So we have a zip file with data about doctors and we're loading it in there. So now we're running this job, just finished now. So if we go back here and we do a reload, Okay, now we have the doctors and we can see the images are the right size. And this is again, the deployed version 1.1 of our application. Let me show you what happens in cases of um, conflict resolution. So as a developer, as Shai, I'm gonna go into my application over here. In parallel, I'm gonna go as Jeff also. And I'm gonna take a shortcut as Jeff. And we're both going to work on the master branch, okay? 
oh, Jeff is going to do something on the master branch directly. He's actually going to change the version of my application directly here. So right now we're at uh, version 1.1 over here. He's gonna go over here and do version 1.2. Okay, and he's gonna say updated the version. All right. So he's doing it and I'm not aware of it. Me as Shai, I'm a developer, I'm working here on my application. I go over here and uh, maybe I do another change to my application UI. Maybe I take the button and I change the title. Okay. And then I say, you know what, before I actually go and deploy this, we should probably increase the version number of my application. I'm gonna do it from the settings of my application. I'm gonna update it to version 2.0. Okay, so. I did my changes over here. I can commit them to my local copy. Okay. Those two changes. Yeah. Like that. And then um, I'm gonna try and publish, oh, I'm gonna do a push into my branch. I'm still working on branch 63. Okay. And then I'm gonna try and do a publish. Oh, and they get an error because we have some merge conflict and we need to resolve them. So this is one of the nice things about working with Visual Builder Studio. If someone else changes code before you can actually uh, merge your code, you're going to get a notification about it. And then you can actually resolve this by looking at the conflicts in the Git tab. So over here, I can go over, I can look and I can say, hey, this is uh, the version that I'm getting for master. So this is their version and this is my version. And I need to decide which one is the correct one to use. So I can say, okay, I want to use my version. So this, then it would be to the toe, or maybe I can do a, uh, no, actually, um, I want to use their version. Okay, and then it's one to two and I'm fine with that. And then I can say resolve and close this issue. And then I can click publish. And now my merge request would go through. Okay, like that. Okay, now everything is fine. I created the merge request and we can then continue to work from there. So this is another thing that you can get from Visual Builder Studio, which is conflict resolution. And again, there's a bunch of other things that you can get over here from this environment uh, that we didn't have time to cover today in depth. Um, I'm gonna, like you can see again, like because we did a change of the version in the deployment, uh, so in the main line of branch of the code, it's going to do again a deployment of this new version. Um, it's interesting to see also that in the builds, for example, you can run builds that do audit on your code, and then you can get reports on code audits that have been breached. Um, so right now, for example, our audit was successful, so there are no issues. And again, we have a blog that shows how to run audit as part of it. Um, you can do deployment to other environments and a lot of other things that you can do from here. And again, it's all integrated, not just with version management, also with issue tracking. So you can, for example, now look and see that issue 63 is now resolved. You can click on it, see what resolved it. Uh, you can trace it back to the specific uh, commit that resolved the issue. And you can see the code changes that caused us, like that allowed us to resolve the issue. So you have full traceability here of your development process as you're working on your project with the rest of the members of the team. All right, we're getting very close to our uh, end time. I wanted to cover a few more things here. One thing to remember is that <clears throat> we recommend that you decide on which development tool you want to use, whether you want to use Visual Builder Studio or just Visual Builder, but don't mix them because the life cycle of your application is going to be a little different. The way that you manage team members is going to be different. Uh, the way that you do version management is going to be different. So if you decide that you're going to go with Visual Builder Studio, which I think is something we would recommend for any serious development team, um, go with that and use that interface to manage the development of your application. And then Visual Builder becomes your runtime platform basically. 
The other thing that uh, you need to know is what do you actually need? Uh, the first thing to understand is that you don't actually need additional license. Visual Builder Studio is a free entitlement that is included for any Oracle Cloud customer, uh, whether you're uh, a regular customer or even a government customer, you're entitled to spin up Visual Builder Studio. Okay, and with Visual Builder Studio, you would get all the functionality that you've seen today, all the Git and issue and wiki and code review, and even a free build VM that allows you to build VB apps. Okay, now this build VM is uh, available for you there for free. It has some limitation on uh, how, uh, on like how, uh, how much time it stays up. Uh, you can only run one build at a time. But if you want to do more builds, if you want to have it up uh, for longer times, you can actually spin your own build VM. You can have as many VMs as you want. You can run as many builds in parallel as you want. And to do that, you only need to basically uh, uh, pay for the compute and storage that are used by those build VMs, okay? Um, so you have full control over that. Um, and again, once you spin up Visual Builder Studio, by default, you're not going to be charged anything, only if you add your additional build VMs and you will be charged just for the compute time while they're up and running. So we highly recommend that you give this a spin, spin up a Visual Builder Studio, try out a little bit the development experience from there and see how it can improve your uh, team development. If you want to learn more about Visual Builder Studio, we have a bunch of blog entries about it. We have, of course, our documentation. In fact, in the documentation in the docs.oracle.com, there are two sections. There is a section for Visual Builder Studio, and there's a section for Visual Builder. And we would recommend that you would take a look at the Visual Builder Studio one. And um, we even have tutorials there to get you started building applications. <clears throat> Again, um, we wanted to mention we have a LinkedIn group. I know that a lot of you have joined over in the last couple of weeks, but we would love to see the rest of you over up there. Just go to LinkedIn, search Oracle Visual Builder and join the group. We would be happy to have you there. We're sharing tips, news, um, open positions and things like that over there. So it's a great place to join the community. Thanks everyone for joining us today. Hopefully uh, you got your questions answered on the Q&A. If you haven't, then please uh, come to our forum uh, on the Oracle Customer Connect and ask your questions over there and have a great day. Thanks everyone. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to join our next seminar, May 17. We're going to cover the new features that are going to be available for you in our May version of Visual Builder. And so a bunch of new features coming your way in Visual Builder and Visual Builder Studio. And we'll be covering those in next month's seminar. So you can register for that one today, get the reminder, or just set it up in your calendar, same time, same place on May 17. Um, um, if you need a cloud tile account, you also have a URL over here. Thanks everyone, have a great day and I'll see you next month.